So, okay, how he got to the friend zone. He literally told me, Michelle, you know, I would like to take it further. Good. And I said, I started, I said, no, why do guys always do that? Like, why do guys always. So he just wanted to be his, his homie. This, and this is what happened. So I, but, I said to him, literally, I was like, why do guy it. friends always have to want it? Like, why do you always have to take it further? And he was like, um, Michelle, we <laughs> hang out. All the time, you if you spend a night over no, here, like no, what, like no, what? But I gotta tell you, I gotta I gotta put it in context for you. Yes. So in the three months that we were friends, Michelle stayed at my house every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> almost. Every, I was uh, to say just every almost day. every day. Yes. So much so that she 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 went to school for musical theater, so yes. she would have rehearsals at my apartment. Yep. I gave her the keys to the house. Yes. Go ahead. Go have the go, well, look look. Go ahead, go have your when I, rehearsal. I'll tell you what he said. So when I, I, told, I cooked, I cooked every night. Yes. She Mine stayed. My best look, friend. She, she stayed. No best friend. Look, best she, friend look, behavior. She, she stayed in my bed. Yes. Stayed in my house. And you wouldn't in even touch her. Wouldn't even touch her. Oh, I loved with it. it. Wouldn't I even spoon it. with her. Every second that escapes without you here with me keeps my heart anticipating till I finally see you. When I made my vows, I told God that I was going to take care of this gift. All my life I've been waiting for you. Girl, you know I've been praying for you. Been writing these love letters to you. So I fight for that future in the present. You know what I'm saying? That was good, Congratulations to the ones who found love For the hope and new beginnings from heaven above I await my future wifey I pray that it won't be too long Too long Every second that it... Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, LaTara Sarr Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? Listen, if you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, can you go ahead and rate this video and leave a review? I will greatly appreciate it. That's how other people are able to be notified about the Dear Future Wifey podcast. So Lit Fam, thank you so much. We have reached half a million subscribers and I thank y'all so much for making that happen. Today's guest, man, I love this dynamic couple. I love it when couples are able to still play together and um, not only do purpose work together because they created this amazing company um, that gets your body moving. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, my homies, Sean and Michelle Clark. How y'all doing? Y'all in this thing. Y'all in this thing. We're happy to be here. We're so happy to be here. I may be black. (laughs) (laughs) I may be ugly. (laughs) But I'm here. But I'm here. But I'm here. Listen, man, these people, those that may have been watching them on The Amazing Race, man, y'all have been doing a dynamic job on there. How'd y'all feel to be on The Amazing Race? Amazing. Amazing. You know I mean? <laughs> like it was it was, it was good. It was an unexpected, um, just amazing thing. It's yeah. like, you know, we didn't know it was coming. Right. You know, right. they 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 you know they reached out to us. My my wife and I, we have a, a video online and it's called um In Less Than a Minute where we do random Where we teach, we, random, we teach random people in random places how to jump double dutch in less than a minute. Yeah. Hold on, y'all gonna teach me at the end of the show? You know Guaranteed. we are. Y'all, y'all gonna teach me? Guaranteed. You know we are. If I trip and break my neck, you won't. No, we won't I have that. Oh, y'all gonna have that? No. It, won't, it won't happen with us. Not okay, with good. Us. Okay, so y'all gonna teach me how to double dutch at in the end of the show. In less than one minute, In less than one minute. That's right, what we do. All right, we gonna do that. And so they they watched the video and they liked our personalities. Yes. And the video, we didn't have a lot of views on it. Nope. And that's just the, te- like, you know, that's the testimony. Like, yes. we talk about it all no, the time. No, specifically, y'all had how many views on that video? It's like we- 700 views on that video. Maybe. And I always say, it doesn't matter about the views. It's yes. a matter about who's watching. That's yes. it. Because you need that one person that may watch that change your whole life. Yeah. And it's all about you need consistency. Is one- it's about yes. the work works. So the it's work like works. that video that you think is going to do something might not do anything. Yeah. That's right. But as long as you keep going, something's going to happen. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and so, they, so they saw the video and they reached yeah. out to y'all, loved y'all personality and yeah. said what? And said, would you audition to be on The Amazing Race? So the, the audition process is like, it's like two and a half months. Yes. Two so and a half months. Two yes. and a half months. So they, they kind of reached, I think they reached out to us in like June or July. Yeah. And we didn't of know. 2020 what? A 2022. Okay. And we didn't know if we were chosen until what? Like the end of September, end early of September. October. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that was that whole process. So like we we interviewed like, I don't know, like ten times. Because you go through layers of yeah. people and then you finally do CBS yes. at the end. Because you gotta realize like with the amazing race, there are twenty thousand people auditioning for the show every year. Yes. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. That's what they told us. Twenty thousand people audition for the show. And so and we got chosen. And we got chosen. We were so God. honored. Come on, somebody. But I'm saying, you know what's funny? I was praying, so I want to travel the world, right? And so I was praying to travel the world with Sean. And literally, the amazing race called, and I was like, okay. Oh, Bam. So, yes. And <laughs> yeah. so, literally, I didn't know yeah. what would come in that package because I had never heard of the show. And so, when they called, at first, we was like, at first, we was questioning, like, is this real? Yeah. And then, um, you know, she gave us an email address, and it was real, real. Yeah. And so, and then I was like, <laughs> Black okay. Black folks be so skeptical, don't I we? know. <laughs> no, because it's, it's, it's like, I never heard of the show, yeah. and then it's- Well, it's I did. Re- I, yeah, I heard of the show. did. I, I heard of the show. She didn't. Yeah. And so, I, I knew how big the show was. Yeah. So, for the amazing her- race to call, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm yes. like- Come on, son. I this know. Ain't, yeah. This on, ain't son. real. Come on, son. Come <laughs> on, son. This ain't real. This okay. ain't real. And yeah. it was. It, it was. was. And we had an amazing we had time. An amaz- it changed me. It changed me. How? Because, you know, as an adult, you get so used to your comforts. So you don't challenge yourself anymore. Right. So, like, after the amazing race, it made me want to, like, rediscover what I like. Yes. Ooh, that's so good. we started, uh, I surprised him. I took him skydiving for his birthday. Which is something he would have never done before nah, the amazing you race. You jumped out a whole plane. So now, now here's the here's the catch. I'm scared of heights, but not just scared of heights. I'm terrified. Doesn't get on roller coasters with the kids or anything. I don't, I don't get on roller coasters. I'd be like, babe, yeah. go ahead. I hold the coats. So what made you do that? Well, because I've been on this this thing. Like I, I'm trying to I'm trying to overcome my fears. Good. You know. So for the past you know few years, I've been like trying to figure out ways to push past my fears because I don't like anything to stop me. Yes. Yeah. I hate it. And so um, I hate it more than I'm scared of, of heights, you know? And so when my wife surprised me, I actually drove there. So my wife was like, get in the car, we're going. Yeah. So I got in the car, I'm driving there. Well, I get, we get there and I see this big sign and I see people, you know, where, you know, they're talking about skydiving. I said, are we going skydiving? And she was like, yes. I already paid for it. Oh, you didn't tell her. She didn't no. tell me. It was a surprise for mm-hmm. my, my 46th birthday. Yes. And so I was like, Michelle, we going skydiving? I'm in. I got to oh, go. Oh, you said you was in. I said, yeah. I'm in. And I mean, I we here. Yeah, we going for it. I had to do it until I was like, oh, wait, I'm doing it too. Right, right, right. But I was so excited about keeping the secret, about getting you him there. About you. Right, I right. I literally was like, oh, no, I have to do it. And then, you know, I got a little scared. <laughs> but it was very exciting. To me, with skydiving, it's more like, you have to set accomplishments for yourself so that you feel like you could do, especially right. as entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yep. It's like you have to constantly, you don't graduate anymore when you're an adult. Yeah. So it's like you have to constantly do something to make you feel like you're reaching new levels. Keep, keep challenging yourself. Yes. Keep creating and new so, challenges for yourself. I was to supposed to go skydiving in probably, I think it was in 2012 or 20 something mm-hmm. with Joey Greco, the former host of Cheetahs. He was on season oh. one. Yeah, he was on season <laughs> one of the episode. He's like, let Terrence go skydiving. I said, yeah, I'm going to go. That, the day of I punked out. I said, ain't no way I'm doing that. I said, why would I jump out of a perfectly good plane? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he used to say before. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I always I always thought I would go skydiving at some point, even though I was scared of heights. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. I just thought I would. But it's not, it's not as bad as you think. Well, yeah. I, I will really do it. Not. So now I will do it. But yeah. back then I was like, I just the day of, I was just like, I just, I just don't. I just remember the episode on Fresh Prince of Bel Air when, when he jumped. That's, will you that's what I was doing. Will you marry me? Yes, I know. Oh, I, was I, like, know. I was doing that the whole time there. I, I was like, 
<laughs> Will and you I, marry me? <laughs> I used to think it was silly for people who had children. I used yeah. to be like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, why, why would you put you yourself risk? at risk? Yeah. But yeah, you realize they got backup this. shoots on yes, this, right? Yes, you yeah, know, um, yeah. and so the closest I came is when I did the indoor skydiving place that we have here. Oh, <laughs> so oh we have that in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I said, "Well, we gonna do that," but then the guy was like, "Gosh, you're really good because I can control and do all this yep. stuff and move around and spin around. I can yeah. do all this stuff." I mean, after I did it, I said I would do it again every year. Every year, every year for my birthday, I was like, you know what? I'll do it every year for my birthday. That'll be my thing that I'm gonna do. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. What's up, Lit Fam? This is your boy, Latero Star Whitfield. Listen, in celebration of the four year anniversary of the Dear Future Wifey podcast, which is coming up April the 15th, I've decided to do a free live event. Matter of fact, it's gonna be a masterclass called the Love Blueprint. I've gotten emails, DMs, comments, people always soliciting my advice on how to find the one, how to position themselves for the one, how to get back out here in these dating streets and explore the possibility of finding the one. And, you know, I've only made this information available to my personal friends or when people DM me, you know, I'll you know give them advice. But I said, you know what, I want to help the masses. And so what I've decided to do on April the 15th, 16th, and 17th to do a live masterclass called The Love Blueprint. As a matter of fact, this morning, I got this DM. I'm going uh, to keep her name private, but she says, I did a thing, LW. It started with a seed you planted that took root and restored hope within me. You made me believe in unicorns. Before you, I hadn't seen a man after God who was vulnerable and transparent about his past, present, and dreams of a future. You were in search of love and redemption. It had been such a foreign concept. It felt like a figment of my imagination. I'm grateful for your obedience. My unicorn found me, and now I get to be the wife I've always known I was called to be. Big hug and big thank you. And that's from a friend that had been DMing me for about, probably about two years now, if I go slide all the way back to the DMs, but she sent me her wedding photos, go visit loveblueprintmasterclass.com and register for this free live event. Man, it's going to be life changing. Can't wait to see you there. So let's talk about y'all's marriage. You know, the Dear Future Wifey podcast, we, we believe in keeping it lit. Uh, we live intensely and transparently. You guys have been fans of the show forever. We did a pre-interview, <laughs> great conversation. Absolutely love y'all, love what y'all stand for, yeah. love how y'all built this dynamic uh, marriage. Not only a company, but y'all are doing work together. Uh, oftentimes when people are working together and loving each other together, it can get very difficult and and that can cause the demise of the marriage because you don't have a break from each other. Yes. How are you guys able to balance that? You know, I don't, I don't know what balance means, mm -hmm. but <laughs> what I do know is that I like him. Mm -hmm. Like I genuinely, genuinely like him. So there's no too much. Like if he's downstairs for too long and I'm upstairs, I'm like, like you don't like me, babe. Like I don't understand mm -hmm. why you don't want to be with me. Michelle, are you clean? So, are you, are no, you clean, Michelle? No, 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 she, she's not. She's not clingy. I'm not clingy. I'm just. She's um, not clingy. I no. always say he's highly no, no, addicted. No, 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 he's, not, he's, high, he's highly blink, addicted. Blink if you're okay. Blink if you're okay. <laughs> blink if you're okay. <laughs> he's, he's I like him. Like he's, he's highly, highly addicted. He's highly addicted. That's, we're both Leo, so we're a lot. That, you know, that's the thing yeah. we have in common. Michelle and I, we love to be together yes. all the time. Yes. I love that. It's, it's a lucky thing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. First, how, how many? How long y'all been married? Put context been, around it. We've been married for 10 years. And, and y'all known each other? Together for 15 years. For 15 years. years. Okay. And I'll say this. Because, okay, so often we always hear that marriage is hard, right? right? And it's like all this hard work. But I think what we believe in is sometimes we get scared to say it because we feel like we'll get beat up. I know. But I feel like marriage is easy. So life is hard and marriage makes it easier. Right. Meaning like infertility we dealt with, marriage made it easier. Ooh, Finances good. could be hard. Entrepreneurship can be hard. Yeah, those but things are hard. Ma being married makes it easier. I agree. Um, I lost my father in 2021. Losing a parent? That's, That's hard. Insane. That's hard. But having him with me during that process made it easier. So it's just like, I feel like life can have hard moments, but marriage makes it easier. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make it easier, I don't know why. Why you're in it. You know what I mean? I like that. Because yeah. I agree with that. 
And, and it's actually biblical. The Bible says that one can chase away a thousand demons and two can set 10,000 demons to flight. Yes, yes. That means that because of your covenant, because of your unity, you're able to do literally 10 times what you can do as an individual. And if the math was math, then you'll say one can chase away a thousand, two can right. set, uh, no, set 2,000. Yes. But God's grace is on it, the number five, and you can do 10, you know, you can do 10,000. Yes. And so it should be easier. But oftentimes yes. in marriages, we hear the opposite. We, we right. hear that, you know, um, get, basically just get tired of the person that's with you. Right. And the pandemic caused a lot of divorces. It a made lot. people start recognizing, I don't like you. When you're right. talking about you like him and you want him around you all the time, yeah. the pandemic made people say, can you go to work? Can you leave right. the house? Because I don't like you being in the same air that I'm breathing. Right. Yeah. And so, so it was like that from day one when y'all met each other. It was like that from day one. So I, I, let me just tell you how we met, right? That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. Yeah. So um, I was a filmmaker, and we had made this movie, this romantic comedy. It was called This Thing Called Love, yes. The Irony, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so a friend of mine, she was like, you know, Sean, I'm having a showcase. You should come by and sell your movie because we were out in the streets hustling, selling our movies. You yes. know what you do yeah. back in the day. Brooklyn. Um, yeah. So we were selling our movies. She's like, come on through. And so I get there. And guess who's the bartender? It was a it was a club. Guess who's the bartender? I was bartending. My, my wife. Now my my wife was the bartender. Yes. And so my friend, we had the same shirts on. And for me, when I see two grown people with the same <laughs> shirts on, I'm just like, okay, well, why do y'all have on the same shirt? What does it say? So I asked him to come over. Uh -huh. I read the shirt, and he told me about the movie. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to buy the movie. But I said, you know, I'm at work. That's kind of productive. I don't right. spend money at work. <laughs> right. She so, he said, money. Yeah. so he gave me the movie and he said, um, if you promise to watch it and tell me what you think about it, then, you know, I could give it to you for free. Right. And, that, and, we, and we would do that a lot. So like, some people would want to buy the movie, but they just didn't have it. And I yeah. would go, you know what? Yeah. Here's the movie. Here's my number. Yes. If you like it, give us a call. Yeah. And so I watched the movie mm -hmm. and I thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up calling him, telling him about the movie. Right. But it was so easy. It's easy. like I already knew him. So it's like mm -hmm. we kept talking. And then we were hanging out. What the, almost the same day? Yeah, he asked me to go to a concert. That's a another That's, story. <laughs> so we were hanging out. What almost every single day? Every single day. So since since that day, we spoke every single day. Yes. And we hung out from the first day. Some a friend of mine got me some tickets for a concert. Yeah. And I was supposed to go with a friend, and he canceled. And I was like, you know what? Let me call. Let me call Michelle. And really on some. Michelle was just so cool. It was like I knew him already. It, it was like, it's like we knew each other. It yeah. was so, it was weird. I was like, you know what? I got these tickets for a concert. You want to go? And she was like, yeah, let's so, go. So you, were you calling her as a friend or a potential? I literally was calling her as, as a friend. Yep. And it's because of where I was mentally. So I was, I just got out of a relationship like a year and a half ago with my high school sweetheart. And so I was literally, that, that time I was really working on me. So for like a year and a half, I was just focusing on um, bettering my best. I was just trying to be a better person. I was trying to get over. I was trying to find out who I was because I was in a long term relationship before. So in that time, I had to figure out who I was and I was practicing celibacy. <laughs> did you tell her? Wait, wait no, I, I did tell her, but I messed up. I messed up twice. With my no. manager at a restaurant okay. that I used to work at. But oh, that's all right. That's we don't wait, need to know wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. We're getting yes, no we need to know that. But we're we getting no track. We're getting no, no track. No, no, How can. did we turn our friendship into a relationship? <laughs> so, no, Sean. No, no, no. But Sean, I, you ain't going to no. just say that and then jump off the conversation. No but, no, but, no, but the reason why I'm telling you that is because I really want you to know my headspace. Right. Yeah. So I was, I was seriously trying to be better. And I wanted... Like, I... I don't want to jump forward, but I, I literally prayed for Michelle. Like I, I wanted, I wanted to to meet somebody that I can tell good news to without feeling guilty. Hold on, Sean. What? That's some good stuff. I dated a woman where you would be so. It's like you would feel guilty to tell them something yeah. good happened. It's a crazy yeah. thing. You're like, why can't you celebrate me? So you would downplay your own success. Oh, yeah, well, I just, you know, I, you know, this right here happened yeah, to me or yes, whatever. That, and you'd be like, why that was do I have my, to be ashamed of my own success? That was my life. 
Wow. Like the the last four years, I don't want I don't want to talk about my other relationship, but I'm yeah. just saying because I, I would just want I want you to know where I was for the last four years. That's where that's what it was. They were together fourteen years. Fourteen, right? Yeah, that's a long so time. I, right, and so I couldn't. I felt like I was losing myself. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. When I met Michelle, she was such a a, a breath of fresh it was air so easy. that when we started talking, she just made me happy. It was just I just wanted to be happy. I wasn't thinking about being in a relationship. I wasn't trying to holler at her. It was literally, wow, she's a good time. I want to have a good time. I deserve it. And for me, when we was so we hung out as friends for three months. Yes. And what I liked is that he respected all of my boundaries. Mm -hmm. meaning, what boundaries did you have? Because I was a bartender, which means. I had a lot of boundaries because people will always try to overstep. Yep. And so I didn't like guys hugging me or any of right. that. So we would hang out and he would ask me for a hug. I mean, wait, I was spending the night at his house. We was hanging out. And I was you like, You said this you wouldn't guy, let him hug you. I wouldn't know. I didn't like because he didn't force it on me. So mm -hmm. literally, we would go, we went to the movies and I'd be like, bye, Sean. And he was just so nice. And so how did he out. not fall in the friend zone? So, okay, I, how he got in the friend zone? He literally told me, Michelle. You know, I would like to take it further. Good. And I said, I started, I said, no, why do guys always do that? Like, why do guys always. So you just want to be his, his homie. This, and this will happen. So but, I, I said to him literally, I was like, why do guy friends always have to want it? Like, why do you always have to take it further? And he was like, um, Michelle, we <laughs> hang out. All the time, you if you spend a night over no, here, like no, what, like no, what? I, but I gotta tell you, I gotta, I gotta put it in context for you. Yes. So in the three months that we were friends, Michelle stayed at my house every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> almost. Every, I was starting uh, to just every almost day. every day. Yes. So much so that she she w she went to school for mu musical theater, so yes. she would have rehearsals at my apartment. Yep. I gave her the keys to the house. Yes. Go ahead. Go have the go, what, look look. Go ahead, go have your when I, rehearsal. I tell you what he said. So when I, I, told, I cooked, I cooked every night. Yes. She my, stayed. My best look, friend. She, she stayed. No best friend. No best she, friend look, behavior. She, she stayed in my bed. Yes. Stayed in my house. And you wouldn't in even my touch bed. her. Wouldn't even touch her. Oh, I loved her. it. Wouldn't I even spoon it. with her. Then, wouldn't but wouldn't then even then touch this, her. This is what happened. So literally, he <laughs> so I just said, wanted to tell you all of that, so, just so that you know why I was us just like, you know what? Um, we gotta we we're gonna take this a little further. So you know because you said, got no space for no other woman yeah, at that yeah, point. That's exactly that's what he exactly. said. <laughs> Were you there? there? Were no. you I was there? there? No. I am you and you is me. <laughs> no, that's exactly what he said to me. Literally, so I said, I said, you know, how come guys always have to do that? Because I've been violated by violated by guy friends before. So I was like, why do guys always want to take it further? So he said, um, Michelle, we hang out every day. Like, come on. So he said, okay, if we're not going to take it further, that's fine. But you can't like be with me every day. You can't Fair spend yeah. the night. And so I started crying. <laughs> and I was like, wait, but we're best friends. Like, what do you mean? So he said, okay, okay, okay. We could hang out. <laughs> and then, then one random day, he got uh, locked up for a suspended license and I couldn't find him. Mm -hmm. And I literally was like, God, if you let me find him, if he's okay, I will confess my love. But I got, right? I, I, oh, so you really wasn't, you just hiding. I didn't, she, she, it's like, it's like it didn't click until I wasn't there. Yeah. And, and, and I got to tell you, that's what happened. I got, I got to tell you what happened. I got to tell you what happened on the other side. Yeah. yeah. So while I was in the bookings, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> so <laughs> while I was there, I called my mother. I said, do not call Michelle. Don't call her. I'm not going to call her. You don't call her. I said, she has to miss me. That's, I, that's what I said. I said, why, she, why, why did you take that because approach? Because I felt like she was taking, not taking me for granted for lack of a better word or phrase. Like I felt like she was taking what we had for granted. Like we weren't just friends. And so I had to, I had to see, I had to, I had to break, I had to break it up because we was, we, we saw each other every single day. I want every you to day. see what it feels like to, to, to not know where I am, Yes. to not see me. You're going to have to miss me. And so and I was like, God, please. Look, so I, I had to spend the night and I sat there and I was like, watch, tomorrow she's going to, she's going to, she's going to be like, oh my God, where are you? I literally was I, like, oh I, my I God. Knew, I knew, it, I knew that was the, the shift that she needed. I don't know why. I just felt it. Something just told me, something just told me to do it. And I'm not trying to play games. No, you're just saying that this is I'm the reality trying, of this it. Is, this is the reality. Yeah, if like, I can go this, off and marry somebody else, you're going to be sitting up and trying right. to confess it the day I'm right. not married. Right, because th this, is, this is my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so 
The next day. So let me ask you this real quick before you go there. How long from that moment when you said, hey, let's take it to the next level, she was opposed to it, and then you got locked up? How much time was between that? Maybe like another month? Maybe, yeah. So you tried to play the role of just putting your feelings aside and say, all right, I'm just going to be in this friend zone with her. Just, we're going to be friends because I. And then she was still coming over your house every day. Every Mm -hmm. day. Yeah. And the thing is. we were just so good together. Kind of like how we are, like how I mean, we are now. It's like little, nothing changed. He would like say little things that made me know he was still interested, but mm-hmm. I loved, I loved, I just loved our relationship so much mm-hmm. that I just didn't want, I don't know. But I, and also I had been in such bad stuff before yeah. that it's like I couldn't identify it. But what I loved was being with him. I knew that I loved being with him. But what ended up happening when he got um, the next day, when he was okay. When he got released. When he got released, <laughs> he came and picked he me was up, but he was with somebody. <laughs> he he was, was with his homeboy. No, 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 no. My homeboy. I was with my homeboy. Okay. And I was literally like, no, I'm ready to like confess my, my love. But we got somebody else here. <laughs> yes. And so literally, finally, when we got rid of that person, I spent the night again. And this time I rolled over a little further uh-huh. and then I realized oh I can marry him after uh-huh. what happened that evening but, but, <laughs> I she, said, <laughs> but she, she, she scoots back we spooned we that's spooned. what we spooned she scoots back she I, put that back into it and, and I said like, oh uh-oh. we okay. here now <laughs> we here now oh and then, and then I said, oh. A little bit. <laughs> and so he laughs, he laughs. But my definition of marriage Uh-oh. is, no, I'm going to say it appropriately. Cover but my definition of marriage is a best friend who makes you climax. Oh, that's good. Sharing a life with a best friend who makes you climax. I agree. And so I figured out that night that we could do make that you climax. part. And then I said, you know what? I can do this for life. <laughs> and so there, and no, even it was so funny because. So did you confess after that moment that you say, I really been, I, I missed you and mm-hmm. I thought I was going to never see you again. I and- didn't say, I didn't say too much, mm-hmm. but after, afterwards, I think he realized after that evening <laughs> that mm-hmm. it was going to be more. And then he asked me, because I like titles. So he asked me to be his girlfriend on January 1st, January 1st 2009. 2009. And so I said, yes, I'll be your girlfriend. So, okay. Then, so how far between your climax moment and the moment he asked you to be your girlfriend? That was, that was in December. It was in December. And that mm-hmm. was December 31st. We came back from a party. So January 1st. Mm-hmm. Came back from a New Year's so party. So it was like maybe like December, maybe like 14th or something. So 15th. about two weeks later. Two weeks yeah, later. About yeah, two weeks later. So what were you thinking after that moment then, Sean? After after which moment? The <laughs> moment. The, 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 the spooning moment. No, it, you know, I was just, it, it, it just felt right. It felt like. Like, I knew I was right. I knew we were supposed to be together. Like, I knew, like, I knew you were my person. How would you have felt even after that moment she still didn't want to be with you? I probably, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think that far. I, I'm <laughs> not going to hold it. I'm not, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that far because. You just knew when she did that, it went to the be, next because level. Because we were, we were already living as a couple. We were. Not not too much changed after that. I mean, we had <laughs> we we had sex, but everything was still it everything it was, was better because now you could I could I could it's, hug it's, him a million yeah, times. Yeah. I could it's just the be, ease of it all. So you changed now after that title. moment. Yeah. I changed because it's just like you say, safety is freedom. Yep. So it's like once and I think that's that's what those months were for me. Yeah. Those months to me were figuring out if I could feel safe. Good. And then once I realized I was safe. Mhm. And I remember he laughed. He was like, I didn't know you were this affectionate. Yeah, I, didn't, I had no idea. I had been, he, you know what I mean? I had yeah. just been reserved. reserved. Reserved, yeah. And then once I realized that like, you know what I mean? He's he's the one. Yeah. Then it just felt like I could I could love fully yeah. without, with all. No could, restrictions. With, with no, no restrictions. restrictions. Yeah. And then, yeah. And also people always say like, how do you know Sean was the one? And I always say, it's because, and even till this day, it's because you're the one moments keep happening. It's just like there you're was. You're the one moments keep, keep happening. Keep yep. happening. And I mean, you know, literally when I was. I like um, that. Well, for all the ladies that have breastfed before, when I was drying out my milk, I remember he wet the towel, like a hot, hot towel. He wet it with hot water and brought it over to me to help that pain release. Mm-hmm. And he let the bed get messed up. And it's just like. I remember that being a moment. Good. He got me, um, he got my favorite singer from, um, um, what's the band? Tank, Tank and the Bangers. Tank and the Bangers to sing me happy birthday. It's like there's so many moments that keep happening. You're the one moments. They kept happening. You know what I mean? And they keep happening. And so that's how 
that's how I just know he's the one. He continues to be the one because it's, it's, yeah. Sean continues it's to the, be the one. Yes. You're the one moments. Yes. And so how long from the moment that y'all made it official on January the 1st, bringing in that new year in, what yes. year was that? 2009. That was 2009. 2009. January 1st. And y'all dated for almost five years before get time to not? Uh, well, like, four, because we got... Three. I told him 2012 was my lucky year. If you don't propose 2012, then I don't want anything. He proposed three. December 26th, 2012. Sean, why you wait so long? Because he won't uh, let me I, be I just, a... I can't well, boss him around. I, I, you really can't. No, um, <laughs> I cannot. No, I just wanted to wait till I was ready. What yeah. was ready for you? Um... So I'm I'm the kind of person, it just comes to me. It's kind of like, I was just like, you know, it literally out of the blue, I was like, you know, I'm ready to marry Michelle. Like I want, I, I want to make her my family. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to grow a family with her. Like she is the one. So when did that come? December the 26th, you proposed. So what, I, when did you get the aha moment? I think it was, it had to be like around late October of that year, maybe early November. I was, I was doing a gig out in, in Philly and I was just, I was just, I was working. I was just thinking, you know, I want to marry her. And then I just, I started thinking about all the reasons why it made sense. You know, I just, I, I love every part of Michelle. I love how brilliant she is. Oh, I really? love I love I, I love how fun she is to be around. I love her perspective perspective on things. I love her passion yeah. about everything. My wife, my wife, Pass she's about so, everything. She's just so passionate with like even when she speaks, yeah, yeah. She, she draws you in because she's she really she really means what she says. And and that was another thing. You know, Michelle tells the truth. She Michelle is Michelle 100% of the time. Wait, I got to tell you. So when I told him that, like, um, we should just, like, stay friends, I told him everything bad about me. So I was like, you don't want to be with me. Trust me, Mm -hmm. okay? I've done this, my life, this. You know, you don't want to be with me. And I was like, that's all you got? Yeah. And he literally, like, I tried to tell him bad. Oh, that's it? He was like, Michelle. Girl. Girl, like, bye. grow up. Like, come on, you know what I mean? Like, like we're in childs right now, girl. Right, right. I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm a grown man. <laughs> Literally, he was I'm like, a grown hey, man. You, mean, you mean you lived your life? <laughs> oh, okay. And so, literally, exactly. right. I thought I, you know, may, I don't know, but I just thought if I told him everything about me, you run that, away. Yes. It, he would run away. And made him dial in closer because he, he loved the transparency. He loved that I was so honest. <laughs> he literally was like, Are we here, Sean? Are we here? <laughs> he literally was like, Okay. I feel she like is. you were there with us. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but that's what it is. It, yeah. And w- when you talk about safety, safety means love to me. Right? So I feel like if, if I could trust you, man, I got you for life. Facts. That's it. Facts. And the fact that she was vulnerable telling you all the bad stuff, the stuff yeah. that most people hold sacred and take it to the grave, no. that showed you that I can trust you with yes. even the worst part of you. Yes. Uh, um, Beyonce have a song called Flaws and All. Yeah. And I love that song when I first hear it, heard it years ago. Because if we can love each other's flaws, then all the other stuff is gravy. If I can, if you can tell me the all top. the stuff that you're ashamed about, yes. the stuff that you're not proud about, right. and you trust me with that, even the Bible says, cast all your cares on him because yeah. he cares for you. Yeah. And we learn mm. to do that in Ooh. relationships to say, these are my vulnerabilities. These are the things that I'm ashamed about. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another so that you mm. may be healed. And so even while you were confessing those things that you didn't like about you, yes. it was healing the broken girl inside of you because yes. now you're finding safety in the man that you thought would leave after sharing your vulnerabilities and he says that's all you got yeah, that's, how, that's like, how God treats us yeah. that's all you got come on yeah. that's all you got, that's all you got. Yeah. and so that's where safety began to be even cultivated on a deeper level because you said it with the mentality of I'm going to say it and push you away yeah. and he says that's just making me draw you closer that, yes yeah. I want to shout right now <laughs> I want to shout yes. right now. No, but I gotta yes. say this too because Sean was so inspirational to me. Because when we were hanging out, I was I was messing with someone else, not in a real way, but in a real they, way. They were just they were just I would say my fix it man. Yeah. So whenever I I would go to that person, and I remember that's the last wife. time I was yeah. there, real. Real the last time I was that's there, it. I was yeah, like, that's... what am I doing here? I want to go to Sean's house. This is not right. And so literally, that was the last time I was ever with someone else. And literally, I went to his house and I told him. Good. And I was like, I'm going to practice celibacy too. 
And I was like, I need to clear my life. This is just, you know what I mean? I want to yeah. I want to not do this. And he was like, okay. Because I, I knew okay. that was a little crazy. No. I, came, I was like, I was like. Because <laughs> I came, he was like, okay. And literally, I started practicing celibacy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long at all. <laughs> it wasn't that long. Practicing for three days. <laughs> she but said I practice. was intentional about the three days. <laughs> Bit of, it was a, a more well, than a month. She was going to so. do it. I was like, okay. He was all like, right. okay. You just, you're, you're that's what we're doing today. Yeah, okay. All right. So I'm going to believe it. You didn't believe it. But, no, I was like, this is, this is not going to no, last. This is not going to last. I, I just knew. I just knew <laughs> I wanted it. I just wanted something different. And so that was, yeah. So you wanted something was, more real. And I so did. you would you would go to the fix-it man, but then come home and cuddle with him. Yes. Well, you wouldn't even cuddle with him. You just lay yeah, in the bed yeah. with him. And what I realized is because I didn't want the attachment. I was in control of the yes, other situation. Right. I was in complete control. Yep. So I couldn't be hurt. So right. I was protecting myself from hurt. So I was boundaries with him because I wasn't doing anything physical with him. Yep. Because So that meant... He couldn't hurt me. Yep. And the other person had no emotional attachment to them. And they actually wanted emotional attachment, but I was so in control, you know what I mean, that I didn't... No one had both because that was too dangerous. That's good. You and I, I, mean? I wish more people, especially women, could be more honest about that. Because yeah. men, we operate like that. That's just every day of the week <laughs> yeah, for yeah. us. Oh, I'm a gangster. Yeah, so you're a gangster. Oh, you, a thug, you a thug princess up in this bad boy. Oh. Yeah. That's how dudes, dudes be like. That's why when women get mad at dudes, be like, how did you cheat on me with this other woman? He said she meant nothing. How did she not mean anything? Right. You just go crazy, man. Be like, I just had sex with it. Just had sex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They can't understand it. But you're giving voice to exactly the way men think. Yeah. Majority at all times. I mm-hmm. just caught that. Yeah, yeah. It's the reality. And then you brought it, you threw my yeah. boy under the bus earlier. You said he done messed around with your boss. Yes, ah. he did. And this, you know what's funny? That's part of the reason when I said no, I was like, I would never mess with you. You messed with some, you know what I mean? Like you messed with but that my was, old that, boss. That was before oh, you, right? That, that was, was way, me, that, yeah. no, it was way before her. Yeah. That's what I was like. Not Michelle, way, way, but I was way. like, Michelle, this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I didn't know you. What do you want me to, I can't take it back. Okay. I, I, I can't, I can't do it. I made that decision without you in mind. Well, I didn't know you. I, like, I don't care. I got to see her yes, when I go to exactly, work. Exactly, literally. I was like, you mess with her like out of all the people in the world. Then you judging his decision making. I know. Right. Crazy? Everybody her? That's oh my that, god. That literally was I got that. I got because, that for a little while. And it wasn't because it was hers, because I knew her. Yeah. Like it was like she's actually some I know this person. He's like, like no way like, well, I would mess well, with well, you. Glad no way. You know, he said, well. Yes. <laughs> Ways I know each other. Yes. But, I t- we just, but, but I told you though. Yeah. But I know <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Yes. I told but we got to put it together how our parents knew each other mm-hmm. and huh? how, like, yeah, this is so, a destiny type thing. Oh, oh, say that again, no, man. This is a destiny, destiny type thing, baby. <laughs> because our families, when Sean and I were hanging out as friends, remember he had the movie. Yes. And so literally, um, I came home. We had the movie because he, he knew my mom and stuff. Right. And so I showed my mother the movie. Well, you showed my mother the movie. So, yeah. So I, I showed her mother the movie and I was like, you know, this is a movie that I'm doing. Oh, no, you did. Yeah. Because and then, and then she was like, no, well, my girlfriend's son made this movie. Yeah. And she looked at Michelle like. Like he was scamming. Like I was lying. And I said, well, what's what's your friend's name? Yeah. And she said, Judith. I said, and I, I started laughing. I couldn't I couldn't get it out my mouth. I was like, that's my mother. And my mother was like, what, Miss Clark? Because they worked. They worked together. The, yes. They worked I mean, together. There, there, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot of those. Yes. So like. Um, wow. On, on, on the night before our wedding day, I was, we had to drop our car off at the wedding house, right? Yeah. So I passed by my father's job and I was like, well, you know, my father used to work there. He was with my dad, both of them. Oh, I was, I'm house. sorry. I was, I was with her father. Yeah. And um, he was like, your father, he said, I used to work there. And I said, really? He said, what's your, what's your father's name? I said, you know, Stanley Clark. And she, he was like, oh, my God, I worked with your father. His father passed away. So y'all away. mamas worked together and y'all daddies yes. worked together. Yes, and we didn't but, find, I couldn't but, find out until the wedding day because we did the whole not speak before the wedding day. But, and so I didn't find right. out until after we got married that my dad knew his dad, but his father passed away when he was eight, eight years old. Yeah. So, so ye- you're talking about out. years before. Years so before. So our parents knew each other for years. Before we Before ever we met. even met. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? What are we, the odds of that happening? That's what I but, said. But not only He's that. He's actually working together. They working together. together. Not only that. Michelle's parents, when I was a kid, I used to live on this block in Brooklyn, um, Ocean Avenue. Yeah. Michelle's parents lived next door to me. I was three years it's old. It's like we kept being around I, each other without being around I was, each other. I was three years old. They lived next door to us. Never knew it. 
We found all of that out later. We, all of that. We have we have so many similarities. So like many. Her, her her brother, her brother, her father and brother have the same middle name as my father and brother. Yeah, it's crazy. And like it's Eugene, middle, so that's not a common her, name. Her middle name is my sister's name. Yeah, Yvette. You know, it's just it's so many like. So what did your what did your mama say? <laughs> what y'all parent? What y'all mama say when y'all and your parents say when y'all said when they met y'all and found out all these connections? They they were just like it has to be meant to be. It has to be. Meant, they yeah. they were excited. They were so excited because they actually like each other. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Our in laws, they they're real. They actually yeah. really cool. The bomb. Yeah. They were cool before y'all. Yeah, they were before cool. Us. Yeah, they were like, cool before us. Fall out, we still gonna be cool. Yeah. <laughs> like they were cool before us, and I love my mama. Shout out to my mama, but she don't get along with everybody. <laughs> so the fact that literally they worked together and they liked each other, That's that dope. to me was just like it, it was so many pieces like that. We we were just supposed to be together. We were supposed to be together. You touched early on about how y'all struggle with fertility issues um in y'all marriage yes. when did that was it, when did that come about so Two, literally well, 2000 and well i was turning 30 so, so on my that? 30th on my 30th birthday i, I don't was, i don't want to date oh, you because yeah, i know you don't want to i don't tell my age ladies you never tell, tell their age, age okay right. um guys don't, guys, don't do the numbers. math don't, don't, don't do the math, math don't add up nothing <laughs> <laughs> but he a little older than me we'll just say that anyway. <laughs> so literally after um our first year of marriage uh-huh. um i said okay now it's time to try yes so we started trying and I thought it would just happen. All the years I tried not to get pregnant, yeah. I thought it would happen. Yeah. And so it wasn't just happening. Right. And so I was like, something, something is wrong. And so we went to the doctor and then she told um, me that I had fibroids. And so um, after that, we continued to try. She told me that I was going to have to, um, well, first she sent me to a, a fibroid embolization specialist. She sent me to him. I had to get an MRI. And then after that, they told me that the only way I was going to be able to have children is if I got an abdominal myomectomy. And what is that? That's basically a C-section, but you don't take out a baby. Instead, It's the same surgery. Instead, you take out fibroids. Okay. Mm. So I didn't like that option. We are entrepreneurs. And so um, <laughs> I didn't like the yeah. insurance wasn't insurance. In, exactly. Okay. Trust. And um, all the risk, I just didn't, it didn't sit comfortable with me. So I went to YouTube school. And um, I learned about fasting uh, and um, veganism. and But in between that time, we had two miscarriages. Mm-hmm. So that was a, a struggle in itself. Okay. And I don't know, I'm good. But that was a struggle mm-hmm. um, in itself. Mm-hmm. And so went to YouTube and I tried. I did two 30-day um, juice cleanses because I saw two women that said, that they healed naturally from mm-hmm. fibroids. From and juice so, cleanses? From ju- well, one mm-hmm. from juice cleanse and one woman from a water fast. And so a we had already fast. been playing around with veganism anyway. We had tried it before, did a trial. We just were like trying out veganism and we felt very good. Mm-hmm. So I stayed vegan and then I tried, um, I did two 30-day juice fast and I did a 17-day water fast. Two 30-day. Two 30-day. Thir- back back. Not back to back. So in between, I was eating vegan. Okay. Yes. So I did two 30-day juice cleanses and a 17-day water fast and during the water fast i had a fibroid fall out in the toilet that's a fact and also during the fast what does it look like is this little bit what is- no it was it was like a ball it was like a hard ball we actually have pictures in in the ebook so we took pictures i was actually disgusted when it fell out the toilet because i don't have the stomach for that stuff yeah so i screamed and sean um came upstairs was, and was like what what's going on and i told him and he was like take it out the toilet michelle like take a picture and i was like well no. you mean you mean we can have a baby <laughs> if we get this so, i'm in there oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right 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 yeah he, t- he took it out we took pictures yeah. and it confirmed that it was a fibroid and before that um i did have healing with the because uh, i had a number of fibroids so they end up um shrinking mm-hmm. But it still wasn't um, enough. Right. And so after that, I changed my options and I was able to, after the two 30 day juice cleanses and the water fast, I um, literally had three kids in four years without an abdominal myomectomy. Mm-hmm. Without change an abdominal. Change your diet. Change your diet. 
And water fasting is so healing. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because when you're doing a water fast, the body has to take care of what it needs. That's right. So it has to take care of the liver, the heart, so the lungs. So rid of everything. Everything, everything else. else. And that's go. why literally it falls out. Yeah. It's, it's like cleaning the house. Out. And you're just yes. like, yep. I'm no longer supplying nutrients to this thing. That's right. And yes. I need to go. That's exactly that's what happens. That's simple. That's exa and I just want to say how, so Sean did one of the 30 day juice cleanses with me. Mm -hmm. And he would text me every day juicing for journey day one we thought we were going to have a girl and name her journey clearly that didn't happen um we end up having sean jr first but he texts me every day juicing for journey day one juicing for journey day two mind you he sleeps next to me and mm -hmm. <laughs> still together but just that encouragement every day seeing why i was doing the juice cleanse and so um mm. yeah i literally journaled my whole story i also had a thank you god journal so I would thank God every day for a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. So much so. Like it happened. Like it yeah. happened. She would say it like it happened. Like it yes. happened. So, so much so that in my diary, when I actually got pregnant, I put like a highlighter, like, no, it's real. Because if you were to see my journal, you, you would have thought, thought I was already Speaking pregnant. those things that be not as though they were. Yes. Mm. You would have thought I was already pregnant. And then when Sean Jr. was five months, we got pregnant again. And, sure then, did. and it was so fast. I was like, okay, wait a minute. You know what I mean? You spent so every single month for two years. We had how many pregnancy tests? We took a pregnancy mm -hmm. test every single month. We tried every single month from the miscarriages. So it's just like when it happened when Sean Jr. was five months, we was like, oh, okay, Jesus. And then. Um, but what about, what about when you had Sean? Like how many, how fast did you get pregnant? after you healed oh, the first um, time literally it we was we went to the doctor we went to the the doctor it was one month after um i had a mile short mm -hmm. so i was able to change my options and i was able to do a mile short and literally one month afterwards i got pregnant with sean jr that's right were y'all trying then, to have another kid no, we were just living. No, y'all um, having sex is what y'all yeah. want. We, 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 were, we, <laughs> weren't, we weren't trying because we didn't trying. think it to happen. No, no, we weren't trying, but we weren't stopping yeah. either. <laughs> no, I'm, I ain't going to hold you. We, 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 we weren't stopping. I'm just going to say that. Sorry, and Mom, if you're watching. And then, Mom and then during, 2020, <laughs> during 2020, Sean, he asked to have another. He wanted another baby. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Okay, and then we had another baby, and then we have so just three like children. that. You, you said, "I want another baby." You said, "Okay," and then it was just oh, that it, it 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 didn't. I mean, well, kind of, kind of though, yeah. because I think I think we both kind of felt like something like felt, like something was missing. Like we yeah. needed another child. Yeah. And so when I asked her, and she was like, "Well, first, first she was like, well, let me think about it," and then like shortly after, she was like, "All right, let's do it." Yeah. And I was looking at her like, "Oh." Is that easy? You mean I could just look? Let's have another baby. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, not no it's not more. working no. this time. It ain't work. working. That no. Time. <laughs> no, 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 no. My uh, body is a little. I thought, tired. Wait, I thought we wanted five kids. We thought we wanted five That's kids. That's right. We I both think, wanted five kids. I That's think it. God said party of five. <laughs> and so I think I got the messages confused. Said, party of five. Party of five. <laughs> and so yeah. So yeah. so. How did y'all navigate that space of desiring a child? First feeling like, did you ever feel like, no, it wasn't going to happen? Of course. And then how did y'all navigate that as a married couple? I was scared for him because I was like, you know, this is me. I'm the one that's suffering from infertility. So I was so scared for him because I was like, I knew he would be a great dad. You know what I mean? And so I felt guilty because I'm like, if I can't have children, I can't stop him from having children. Like I would have to let him go and i remember expressing that to him you would let him go yes to have, yeah. you, you would divorce him instead of trying to adopt instead of try, try having a surrogate you just say i gotta let you go divorce go find another I, wife that's well, what I, I thought about i tell you what like i i didn't I, I thought we could have a kid I, not there wasn't one second where i felt like oh my god we're not gonna have children in fact i i i, I always tell michelle it wasn't until we had children where I realized that we, that I couldn't have children either. Like it was, it was kind of uh, like, yeah. because, because when Michelle was going through what she was going through, my focus was to lock in and help her heal. That was it. I didn't even think about me not being able to have kids. I was just focused on her being able to have kids. And yeah. I knew, I knew the kind of woman, Michelle, I, I know the kind of woman Michelle is. So you know, I always say Michelle, Michelle's a world champion in double dutch, right? And I always say you could be a world champion at 
breaking pencils. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just what it takes, the type of person it takes to want to be a champion. So right, it's the teach, it's the John. You better teach. It's it's the tenacity. It's the it's the focus. It's the I'm I want to win. That is who my wife is. So if, not for one second, she, she'll tell you. Yeah. You would have thought we were in two different places. I was like, oh no, we haven't. He children. has such confidence. Oh, like, I know we having it. It's, yeah. it's happening. But I will say this: the thing I'm I grateful for is. I didn't, so during, when you're suffering from infertility, you could feel like it's your whole world, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I always say there are tools that I learned during that process that I still use today. So of course the thinking got ahead, but also I used a unity prayer line because, so I didn't want to put all the pressure on my family, right? Meaning I, I would cry of course sometimes, but I didn't want to put all that weight on Sean and I didn't want to call my friends or I didn't want them to call me back and ask, you know, how you doing today? I didn't want that. I didn't want that. And so I would call Unity Prayer Line, which was like totally outside of any any personal attachment. So I would call them. They would pray with me, allow me to cry, allow me to release. Mm -hmm. And then um, they would pray for you for 30 days. And so literally when I was feeling overwhelmed, I would just literally go drive, go to act like I was going to Publix, take a little longer mm -hmm. and literally call them and just release that so that I could make sure to keep my joy about myself. Right. And also I would write things that I was grateful for. Mm -hmm. I started meditating, which I still do today, because although I was going through infertility, I still had so much to be happy about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I have an amazing husband. Um, I have an amazing family. My girl crew is amazing. Shout out to my girls. Okay. <laughs> um, meaning I had so many things in my life to be grateful for that I had right. to focus on them to make sure that infertility wasn't just taking over my whole world. Yeah. Right? Because it's just not the whole of you. It's just something that's happening at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He casually just threw out, you've been a world champion in double dutch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when did, when, what year was that that you became a world champion? Um, that was a while ago. I was um, I was a teenager when I was a, um, became a world champion. But I've been jumping double dutch since I was four years old. And they actually, you, you competed in yes, this. Yes, mm -hmm. I competed. So how do you win it? So, okay. So when you're from New York, um, literally there's... So I was on the Jam and Jumpers. Shout out to Miss Payne. I was on the Jam and Jumpers, and you do state competitions, then you do the world competition. So you have to come first to third in the state, then you do the world. The world competition, which we actually went to with our kids this year, which was so full circle. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, literally, you compete um, in South Carolina or Savannah, Georgia. And so I won in Savannah, Georgia. And so, yeah, you win the world championship. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, I oh. guess, I mean, what does oh, that so look like? so the competition like? is it's compulsory. So compulsory is you have three members on a team or a double team, which is four members. I was the speed jumper for my team. So you compete in three categories, compulsory, speed, and freestyle. What's compulsory? Oh, compulsory is... It's hard to say it's, what it's, it is. It's, 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 it's a standard trick that yes. everyone has to do. Yes. Okay. So, so it's one person from each team. One person from each team yes. has to do this standard trick and yeah. they have to execute it perfectly. So you have to execute it in 30 seconds. It's two hops, yeah. eight hops on one side, eight hops on a level, crisscross, high knees. If you mess up, it's minus 10 points. So it's like a standard thing that everyone has to do, but you have to execute it perfectly. And then you have a speed jumper on your team. Your time for two minutes. Your count. You count when your left foot hits the ground each time you mess up is minus 10 points so that's how you calculate speed. how are you messing up you're talking about if, they, if you hit the rope if the ropes mess up mm -hmm. and if your teammate drops the rope it's, it's minus 15 points and you're the speed jumper and so, I'm the speed jumper so you're for doing my team. how many jumps in that two minutes two minutes i've made anywhere between 350 and 360 yes mm -hmm. and now the funny thing is where we say this so now competitions um cedar got um what 400 before they 400. got out. Yes. Yeah, this, uh, he's this, a 30, yes. He's this, a 36 time he's a 36 world champion. World champion. 36 times. 36 his, times. His name, every year, yes. his, his name is Cedar Wise. He's yes. probably the best in the world. Best in the, the world. Best in the world. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so your time for two minutes, Jumps and then literally the you have the judges counting your how many times your left foot hits the ground. And you keep getting back in the ropes until the two minutes is over. When you do a doubles team, one teammate does a minute and five seconds, and then another teammate does 55 seconds. And so you're jumping as fast as you can. Of course, you, um, you. The goal is not to mess up, but it's also about who stays in the rope the longest. Because if the other person is going longer but they mess up twice, they get minus twenty points. 
Dang. If that makes any sense. Yeah. And then you do freestyle, which is time for a minute. And everyone from the team has to do a trick. You have to do a floor trick. You have to do a speed trick, a turning trick. And the judges calculate it. Based what on got that. you into this? Because I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> so that's just what y'all do. Oh, yeah. When you're from Brooklyn. So, yeah, everybody. When you're from Brooklyn, Chicago. But I'm talking about you, so it's this known thing that you just compete in tournaments no, to do double dutch. No, so only you when do it it's on offered. The, you, you do it in the hood, and that's it. You know what? That's funny that's you say that. Because Chicago doesn't have a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. So New York, actually, uh, David Walker started it as a sport. So that's what's funny what Double Dutch Aerobics is. The so there's street style Double Dutch and then there's competitive style Double Dutch. And what makes us the pros is that we're professionals in both styles. Mm -hmm. So when you meet people, they either street jump, they've been jumping since they yeah. were five, but they don't know like flips and mountain climbs and all that stuff. That's competitive style Double Dutch. But competitive style Double Dutch, a lot of people don't know street style because you were forbidden to jump street style when you were professional. Why? Why is that? Because people you like to hurt? make rules. Yes. That, that yeah, too. But hurt. my Kind of like team, if you're on a basketball team. Yeah. You can't, yes. you can't. My my coach Ruth Payne allowed us to do both. And so, so that's what makes y'all can be stylish. Y'all yes. can be in there and everybody like, woo! They just yes. love y'all. Y'all team come out there and they just get excited. Yes, well, so our everyone that was on a jam and jumpers has the special skill of being able to do both. And so who knew that 100 years later I would create Double Dutch Aerobics where my skill of being able to do both makes this business successful mm -hmm. because I could relate to people who have been yep. jumping their whole lives. Mm -hmm. But then we could teach people in less than a minute because I jumped professional style as well. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, Look yeah. God. It makes, Look at God, I know. Boy. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. I was in theater school and as an actress, they used to say, if there's something else you love, go do that. Because this business is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that I could turn Double Dutch into a business. Yeah. And that's with Sean. Because I, I didn't know, actually, until um, Sean was an entrepreneur before me. And so when I told him the idea for an adult Double Dutch I class. Thought it was, I thought it was the best idea I've ever heard in my life. Because yes. growing up in Brooklyn, I knew how important Double Dutch was to black little girls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was it was everything. Yes. Yep. It was everything when you didn't have anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And so... When she came with me with that idea, I was like, Michelle, we let's let's start this like now. Yeah. And literally, like the next week, we started, the, started class. the class. You see what I'm yeah. saying? If you're married to the wrong person, they, they could have said, that's the stupidest thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they could have. Yeah. Yes. Because I didn't yes. know you could yes. turn yes. it into a business. Yes. Yes. I didn't know you could turn double into a you business. You could cast vision to the wrong person yes. and that's no true. one would ever see that thought. Yes. Because you could be like, I want to do this. Like, why? No, baby. No, I think look, yes. look, look. They can yes. tell you what they told us as actors because I, I I was an actor. I grew I, uh -huh. That's what I did for years. Yes. And did national tour and plays. My own father told me. That's interesting. My own father told me when I was doing plays, my dad was like, go get your real job. Why Why in the world are you... Th so you think you'll be become a national tour and playwright? You really think that? Mm. He's talking about, that's never going to happen. Mm. And then just a couple of years later, I had two shows touring across the country. That's I was in I'm New York, about. did the Beacon Theater with yes. one of my shows. At the Beacon Theater? Yeah. Come Beacon on now. <laughs> did that like three times. You know what I'm saying? That's so big. I was touring around. I did the Merriam in Philadelphia. Yes. I did the Lyric in Baltimore. Ooh. I was touring shows all across the, the Music Hall in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? All across the country country the 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 leah core center in philadelphia yes. as well like, talk that talk I, like i was <laughs> everywhere everywhere with shows touring across the country from toronto to the aries crown the airy crown in in chicago you know what i'm saying yeah. everywhere but my dad one day after i became this national tour and playwright he would have my playbills and he'll be showing he'll drive around in the car with probably sure. in the <laughs> car right now yeah. every play i got I'd be like this is my son yeah. Yeah. Got this. and i was like you remember when you said there's no way i would ever become that and i was yeah. 20 24 yeah. years old, mm -hmm. and he told me that. Because, yeah. but the truth be told, is what happens. Parents and they mean well. They do. But what they're saying is that you came for me. You came yeah. through my loins. I have limits. So how in the world mm. can you do yes. more than I've ever done? Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And they're looking at you saying, how could you ever, how can some seed from me ever produce something mm. as great as that? And so I started, Ooh. and I remember telling my dad, I said, would you tell King David that when he was still yet a shepherd boy? Mm. And I said, I said, you got to think about it, is that the gifts that, and the truth be told, my dad had gifts that he, that were unrealized in his own life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Amazing artist. He would sit there, d design his cars, draw it. I mean, beautiful. I'm talking about wow. he should have been an engineer. But he would draw the vehicles that he had and design mm -hmm. how he was going to get it changed. And he's going to put skirts around the side and put whatever on it. And I remember as a little boy, I saw that. I was like, 
you drew this? He was like, yes. And I was just like, why are you not doing anything with this? Right. And then one no. day I got in trouble because I was tracing something. I was tracing Garfield. And I was drawing a Garfield. picture of Garfield. Uh, yeah. that's, that's before your time, Arsenio. <laughs> so so before your time, you'll know who Garfield is. So I, I, I was tracing Garfield. And my dad was like, I showed him. Like, Look what I drew. He said, you trace that. I don't want to ever see you trace anything again. And it inspired me to draw. And so I became yeah. this great artist. I would draw people. A visual artist oh, would draw people and all wow. that. And I would do that, you know, through high school and get paid for drawing people or whatnot. Because he said, don't ever trace anything ever again. But again, he still never actualized his dream, whatever it was, to be whatever his skill set was. And so when I look at couples like y'all, mm-hmm. I say purpose. Y'all are purpose partners. Because mm-hmm. you could articulate what you decide, what you desire. And he said, most amazing deal I ever heard. Yes. Let's start it now. And the next day it started. And the thing is, he wasn't even interested in teaching with me. Mm-hmm. No, he, he just wanted to help me start the business. Exactly. And so literally he learns, he learns everything. I always say Sean can learn the world by watching YouTube. <laughs> no, really. He put the lights yeah. in our studio. Like he learns everything. And so YouTube one of University. my, uh, yeah, University. one of my former teammates, she couldn't really commit like I want, like I needed. And so he was like, just teach me. And so he ended up falling in love with it. Himself, it's a people business. Well, the, you know what I mean. I mean, also, I, even even as a child, I always wanted to do something where I could be with my family more than I am at work. Good. Even as a kid. Good. And so, like, you know, double dutch aerobics, it it, it, it brings you so much joy. We have yeah. so much fun in class. It's, so it's I can't even explain it to you. And I get to do that with my wife, yeah. and I get to do it with my my children. My children can jump. Yes. My children. They good. No, oh, they, no, they're phenomenal. Our, our daughter went viral. Have them compete, probably. Uh, Man, if they I, want to, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. our daughter went but viral. They're gonna do it as a business. They're gonna be working. <laughs> I'm telling you that. Yeah, our, yes. our, our son started turning at 11 months, yes. and our daughter went viral for turning at eight months. Mm-hmm. It's called turning. You know, I gotta get the vernacular. Oh. You know, oh, no, no, it is. It is. It is. It's called turning. It's turning. So like. It's, a, it's amazing. But we, we have to say what Double Dutch Aerobics is. So Double Dutch Aerobics is a formatted 60-minute workout class. Mm-hmm. So similar to yoga and Zumba, people come and get certified with us so that they can teach Double Dutch Aerobics. So if you want to learn how to teach, you also come to our program. And wherever you see Double mm-hmm. Dutch Aerobics, that's our formatted 60-minute 60 workout class. class. So people jump Double Dutch, but it's never been turned into yes. a, a workout. And I've always liked going to the gym. Like yeah. I like going to take a class. I don't want to think. I want somebody to tell me what to do when to do it and so literally I was like I want to go to the gym and be able to like do something I love Mm -hmm. and so that's what the thought of double dutch aerobics came because I would do spin class he was playing football Mm -hmm. and I kept thinking how come grown men do what they do as Mm -hmm. kids and as women we weren't doing what we did as kids yeah and so that's where double dutch aerobics came about and so it's like how many people in the class uh we max out and like we try we try to max out like 15 20 20 each class and so what yeah. it is yeah. you'll have two people turning and another person doing that and they just alternate in the class no so so yeah, first we start yeah. the class is no experience necessary so the first step is if you never jump before you learn in that minute if yeah. you jump before yeah, you minute. get out whatever your heart desires your pop-ups your mumbles because mm-hmm. people often wonder how come a class could be for somebody who's never jumped before mm-hmm. and someone who's jumped their whole lives exactly. and the reason is because you're doing a different style right so that person who's been jumping their whole lives right. when after they get their jump out and we teach them mm-hmm. like the basic um it's called the basic hop they're like oh my god they, what? They, they're have, ready to go we got ready, them we got them locked in yeah now they believe us. Now they believe us. So that person now who, we're ready to go. That person who hasn't jumped, we teach them in less than a minute, and right. then we teach that person who's jumping their whole lives the basic hop, and then everyone is on the same level. Right. Then you learn double dutch aerobic style, which is uh, we do jump out. So you do two jumps, and you go right behind each other. Then we teach you outside of the ropes, what something like that yeah. kick, and then you do it in the ropes. So you could take a class with someone who's been mm. jumping since they were five, and you guys will be on the same level. And you burn how many calories? 500 to 700 calories per Each class. Each class. And you're laughing so much, you don't even realize mm-hmm. you worked out until you get home. Mm-hmm. That's so fun. And you it's feel, a lot of fun. It's a lot and, of fun. And, and, I mean, so we, fun. we've gotten a chance to take it out, outside the classroom. So we yeah. teach at federal prisons across the country. Yep. We do like we do like you know all of DJ Envy's car shows. Yeah. We do health fairs. We just came from St. Croix do, teaching at the high school. We, yeah, we we were in St. Croix you know two weeks ago. 
I mean, we we do it all. We do like um, corporate events. Yeah. They even call us for movies. Yes, so like we, we do mo- we do movie consultants. So like when they have an actor that needs to jump double dutch, but the actor ninety nine point nine percent of the time they don't know how to jump at all. Right. Yes. So they'll send them to us, and then we teach them how yeah. to jump. And then for the for the movie, so we yeah. we do that a lot. So like y'all don't create a whole industry. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's it's literally we're the only ones in this space, one hundred percent in yeah. the world doing it as a workout class. Doing it as a workout class. So yes. like, we didn't create double dutch. Yes, yeah. of course not. Yeah. Let's yes. be very clear. <laughs> we did not create double dutch, but, but we, we did created create double, double dutch, dutch aerobics. aerobics. Yes. Yeah. And so much has happened from there. It's just like recently we did a sixty day juice cleanse, mm-hmm. and um, I lo- how much was you, you lost, babe? Forty seven. And I lost. You lost what? Forty seven pounds. Yeah. Two hundred thirty one pounds. Yes. In thirty days. Sixty, 60 days. days. Oh boy. Yeah. You could do it. <laughs> oh, in fact, oh, you're joining us April 8th to the 18th is the next 10 day juice cleanse. But anyway, so after the 60 day juice cleanse, um Well, so originally we we were doing a 10 day juice cleanse. Yes. And then like on the fifth day, you know, I was I was watching all of these videos trying to get inspiration to get through the 10. Yes. And I was like, I saw people doing 30. I, mean, I, saw, I saw people doing 60, 100, 300 days. 300, and I was like 300 days. Yes. 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 So, yeah. So a, a a lady healed herself from um just about everything. So she had like, she had 12 different diseases that each of them could have killed her. They told her she was going to they die. They told her she was going to die. She juiced for 366 days because it was a leap year. Yep. And she went from a wheelchair to running a 5K. So there's, a, we, we try to explain to people that there is a lot of power in what you eat. So yes. in juicing mm. and and eating clean. Yes. That's, I'm going to just say that, eating mm-hmm. clean. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, we did, we were doing 10, fifth day. I was like, let's do 60. Yes. Michelle was like, I said, babe, if we're going to do 60, we got to stick to it. <laughs> like, don't say we're doing 60 and then 60 we do 35 days. and we literally, I don't, even, I don't even know where that came from. So I Michelle, don't either. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle uh, we've been doing juice cleanses for about what? 14 years. Yeah. So we'll do 10 day juice cleanses. We'll, the most we've done was, you know, 30 day juice cleanses. Yes, I don't I know. Heal, yep. I don't know where in my mind that I said on the fifth day, we're going to do 60. I don't and know. And I said, babe, if you're going to do 60, we can't quit in the and middle. The, we got to commit to it. The the funniest thing, it was the easiest one I've ever done. Right? How's that? Because of the way you feel. So you that's feel the thing amazing. you can't ignore. You can't ignore how you feel. You feel like Superman. You, you have all of this yeah. energy. You, ha- you, 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 you have this mental clarity. Yes. You just, your, your body feels better. You, you, you recover faster. So if you work out. Yeah. You don't you don't have the the pains after the workout. And talk about marriage, you acting like teenagers. Teenagers all over the place. All over the place. Cutting up tomatoes. No, what's no, no, what's, no, what's, no, what's, what's no, all no, you mean? No, Cut that out. No, sorry. No, don't say that. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Literally, but we didn't know why we were doing the sixty days. But after the sixty days, Sean had an idea to do jump and juice ten thousand. Mm-hmm. So the thing about when you feel good is you want to share it with everyone, yes. right? And so he was like, "Let's do a ten day juice cleanse with ten thousand people." Mm-hmm. And so that's when we, we did the first one, January 2nd to the 12th. Of and this year. Of this year. Right. Yep. I saw and that. And the testimonial. So every day during the 10 days, we go live with someone who's healed themselves from something. And so, so, so that's pe- when we interviewed the young lady's name is Sarah. That's when we interviewed her and she shared her story of going from a wheelchair to a 5K with the power of juicing. We, we have someone who healed from prostate cancer. We Harold. have someone, mm-hmm. yes, Harold. So literally during the 10 days, you're in a Facebook group and every day at 8 p.m. we go live with someone who healed themselves. So you're constantly encouraged. You're not by yourself. We're teaching you how to how to be successful during a juice cleanse. And, and, the, oh. and the thing is like we, we you know, in doing this, you, you, you wonder how come the whole world doesn't know that's about this? That's the only reason you, that's the It only blows our mind. Every story that we hear, every testimony that we get, I'm like, why isn't everyone doing this? Why, like, why not? Why? It, it, you know, with, 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 if you're trying to heal anything, whether it's high blood pressure, um, um, cholesterol, fibroids, fibroids, there are no there are zero side effects to juicing. Zero. Yep. Yep. No, there's zero, zero side there's effects. Nothing. I know it. I know so it. So it's worth it's literally it's worth, worth the try. Worth the try. Worth the try. Yeah. It's right. Zero side effects. Yeah. And I want to be clear. I never think. Any, I don't think anything is wrong with surgery, especially fibroid surgery. No, 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 no. Yeah. To be honest, 
I wasn't trying to be like a, a a natural superhero. I was just trying to have a baby. That's it. That was my only goal. Right. And the and way your insurance wasn't insurance. That's, that's right. right. And you was like, I can't afford I to go to right. surgery. So what could I afford? Some juices. And that's that's it. It. Not only that, I, got, I got the water from BJ's. Okay. I mean, the price done gone up. But it was like five thirty nine. The Deer Park water. That's what I drank for seventeen days. 17 Literally. Days. Literally. And, and so we, even uh, even now, yeah. about five words, it's like, I want the world to know because when I see a teenager suffering with heavy periods, it's like a teenager with a heavy period Say is it. a woman who's suffering later in year, later in her life is suffering from infertility. Yep. It's a woman who in her 50s has to get a hysterectomy yeah. or in her 40s. So it's just like, it's a woman less later suffering That's from endometriosis. Right. It's all, we're just taught, taught to normalize pain. Right. Just because it's common does not mean it's normal. That's right. So heavy periods are very common. I had them for my periods were Gangsta. terrible. Lord, they I'm were listening. terrible, right. and I didn't know that they were supposed to be pain free. That's I just right. didn't know. I literally did not know. I thought it was good luck, bad luck. I thought it was just like something that happens to you. I didn't know that I could do something about it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so, yeah, literally part yeah. of the reason we do the 10-day mm -hmm. juice cleanse is what's happening to people during the cleanse? I mean, they, pe people, are, they're, they're reversing their symptoms. Yes. They're reversing their, you know, from high blood pressure yep. to, to diabetes. I mean, we, we hear all kinds all of kinds things. Of I mean, it is... You know, to sign okay, so when 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 you sign up to the the Jump and Juice 10,000, there's a list of, you know, like different diseases and we ask you to check it check off what, what you may, may or from. may not have, what you're suffering from. So, you know, it's high blood pressure, hypertension, yep. all of those things. 95% mm. of the people that signed up were sick. Suffering mm. from something. 95 because we're it's a whole lot of people just sick in the United States like you said it's normalized it's yeah, it normalized. is yeah. it's normalized whatever oh yeah I got high blood pressure family it, got high blood pressure we always had high blood pressure yeah, yeah. I just, you're just like you always that's just okay <laughs> No, I mean, my, grandma, my mama had it, her it, mama had it, my daddy had it. We just got, and you, our family just got high yes, blood pressure. Yes, and we And we always say it's not hereditary. Your eating habits are. And we, we, we have to explain. Facts. I mean, we have because, to. Because once you push it off on your family, yep. it takes the responsibility off of you. Yep. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And Facts. so we, you know, anytime somebody's like, yo, I'm a diabetic and, diabetic, and I'm like, well, how long would you like to be sick? They be like, well, I mean, my family. I mean, yeah, I just, my yeah. family. I mean, that's how we always like, been. You know what I'm saying? I just. He be like, why are you normal? Like, why are you why, accepting it's, it's, that? But the thing is, don't that accept it. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to. And I think what's so fun about the Jumping Juice 10,000 is it's not that somebody's not smart. It's that we've all been conditioned we've this all, way. Yeah. Conditioned. We've all yes. been. We have. We have. Clearly, we just said we have kids. We have a seven year old, a five year old, and a two year old. Let me give him a name. Yes. Sean, Sean, Sean Jr., Jr., Phoenix, and Maverick. Yes, those are babies. Phoenix and Maverick. Sean <laughs> they, Jr., Phoenix, and Maverick. That's uh -huh. right. They came Shut home up. from school and they were telling us about the food chart. So what I want to, it's like, you can't you, wonder why we are conditioned, conditioned at 30. We've been being conditioned since we were five. And they're in, they're in kindergarten. They're in kindergarten and first grade. About the, and yeah. we're already, t they're vegans. So we're already teaching them the opposite. So they already have to go, oh no, that's not right though. My, you know, like mm. literally, and it's like, you forget in 2024, it's the same chart that we had. Yes. Mm. When it we were just, kids. It's, yeah. It hasn't yeah. changed. changed. It looks the same way. And it's, it's, it's scary, but it's, mm. it's not that we're stupid. It's, we literally just don't know. Well, like yeah. you said, condition. Yeah. We've been conditioned that's and programmed right. to right. think a certain way. And if something wrong, take some medication. Yes. And that's it. And medicine and then, sustains. Food yeah. heals. heals right. And it's just like I, I got saved February 12th. Don't judge me. I do not know the Bible very well, okay? I'm learning <laughs> it. But I just said, I remember I was reading the Bible. I feel like every single page is like monumental. <laughs> but literally, I was only up to Genesis. And I, it said, um, I'm going to say it wrong, but you know you're going to fix it, Latarius, because you know the Bible by heart, okay? <laughs> so literally, it was like you could eat unlimited from the garden. Yep. And when I was reading that, I said, wait. Guys, it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone tries to make it something else, but I think it's literal. <laughs> I think it's if you eat, you know, from God's yes. garden, yep. you can eat unlimited because fully raw Christina eats how much that child she, eats. She's a lot, yeah. When you eat fully raw vegan, you can eat every, you can eat in abundance. I, you I can just, eat in abundance and be fine. And I, when I right. read it, I was like, guys, no one's listening. This is what... No, yep. this is what it means it's for real. Before you said that, I was about to say we got to go back to the garden yep. because that's 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 what it is. And yeah. so at the end of the day, you know, Doctor Sabi, he talked about the same thing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's it just don't make money. 
So in America, being a capitalist uh, yes. society, it's like, I don't want you healed. I, I need you sick. Right. I make money off of you being sick. Right. The hospital stay open when you're sick. People are able to work when you're sick. Right. And so in medication, the pharma, the big pharma gets paid when you're sick. So it's like, I don't want it to be as simple as you right. go back to the garden to get your healing. I need you sick so I can make money. But that's it's like, you know what I always say? Everyone's going to make a choice. People are going to choose. They're still going to make money. Yeah. It's yeah. just like you don't have to hide it from them. There are going to be people. The hospitals are not empty. No, you know what I mean? No. They're actually overcrowded. Yeah. So the fact is, there's still going to be people that want to take that route. Which, but I think we should know all of our options. options. That's, that's what I was just yeah. about to say. That. That's yeah. right. So that we can choose. Just let us choose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's real. That's it. Um, what are some, uh, as we begin to wrap up, yeah. what makes y'all's marriage thrive? What makes y'all. Um, cause it sounds like to me, just knowing around y'all, being around y'all, <clears throat> have y'all ever faced any situation where divorce was on the table? Yeah. Well, not, not, on the not, table. not realistically. Not, <laughs> not, 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 not for real. It was more, more of a threat, but not, I'm going to, I'm going to say no. Sean I'm has said no. the big I, D I've, word to me before. What I've do you say? I've, I've said the big D word <laughs> to Michelle, but the, the problem was. It's not it's not because I didn't want to be with her. I was I was scared that it could possibly go back to what I was used to in in my previous relationship. And I, I'm and I and I'm I'm not trying to compare it, but I I I made this vow like out in my next relationship, which was Michelle was the next relationship, I have to be happy. I want to be happy at all times and if I feel like Something something is off. I don't know. So, it's, it's it's not it's not that I was going to leave. It's just that it's, it's it's almost like bringing attention to what's actually happened. Like I don't I don't want to avoid it like I did and let it get worse. I want to kind of like stop it before it could possibly get to what I what I what I was used to previously. So, so what not, was going on that that made you feel like it can get to a place of unhappiness? I wish I could tell you. I don't even. I don't even. I don't even remember what it was. But I. But I, oh god. But I, I remember how it made me feel. So I don't remember exactly what it was. But I, I, yeah, I remember exactly how it made me feel. I was just like, oh man, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that that path again. Even though it wasn't even close. Yeah, you just said I can see it coming. If this is if this is left unattended, it can take me it here. Gets, it and you had me. a trauma response to what could happen. Wait, wait, wait. Can yes. I say something? That's exactly I, right. I, I want to say something. Yes. This, is, this is why this is why being married to him. No, this is why being married to him is so fun. I have never heard him say that before, okay? So when we it's have the fun, show. It's, so, it's the show. It's the show. It's yellow cow. When, when we, the reason why that makes me feel better is because sometimes when we argue, I'd be like, I... I didn't think it was that bad. I didn't, I didn't think, like, I didn't think the big D you word was. Like, why are you tripping? Why are you, I didn't great. think the big D word was uh, appropriate. The I thing thought is, we were just having an argument. But the thing is, you're actually right. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah. That's and it thing. wasn't appropriate for what was going on. It really was because your trauma was speaking ahead of. See, when we when we're stuck in trauma and you're afraid of what could happen, you'll start jumping the gun and start responding as if something happened. Yes. Not, not like I have never heard yeah, that let's before. Let's have a conversation. This, it's almost like saying, "Hey, babe, let's have this conversation." Listen, when you did this, it made me feel like this. Instead of saying, "We made this marriage may end," yeah. right? You don't jump where? Right? Wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 wait. no, because if, if you do, yes. if you do another 365 days of this, it can happen. <laughs> but this just happened for two weeks. Like, why are you? Why did that escalate? And it don't even faster? be that long. To yeah. be honest it's with not, you, it's not even that mind, long. It's Fear will cripple you and make you respond yes. in a moment as if it happened, like a future response. Yes. And you can mitigate that whole thing by just having a conversation and say, baby, this is how I feel. And you go, oh, I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. Yes. And you go, was it that easy? <laughs> yeah. That literally, that I have, I have, I haven't had it worded that way, like literally ever. And so... That yeah, that just makes so much sense. So what sense did you feel me. on the receiving end? On the receiving end, I literally be like, I thought we were madly in love. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't understand where the D word. That has never. I has not. It has not been a time where I said because even when we're upset. I'm just like, babe, you got to sleep next to me. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's good. there hasn't there hasn't been a moment 
yet where I thought I don't want to be with him. There mm-hmm. hasn't been that moment. There hasn't been that moment for me. So then our two worst arguments, when it got there for him, I just felt like, well, where am I? Like, and am I? This. And the key was, it's not that he imagined not being with you. He was afraid that the, the marriage would end. So it's not, yeah. it's not like, it's yes. not like he's saying, like you said, it's not a moment that I imagine not being with you. It's the same with him. He, he he wants to be with you, but yes. he felt like it wasn't sustainable for whatever that whatever was going on. Whatever that was, moment said yeah. this could end, and that was that made him afraid. Instead that, of dealing with the fear of what is causing him to trigger like that, woo. he just felt the fear of his trauma response saying this could end. I told y'all I should be a therapist. Ah, but let me tell you listen, something. You just broke it down. <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> I'm so glad I came. I am so no, glad I came. No, that literally, that literally but that, me. But that literally is it. Yeah. 100%. Because it's, it's not like I don't love her. No. Yeah. I love I love my, I love my, this is my wife, my life. I can life. hear how you talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I can hear I, how you I talk lo- about I it. I love my wife. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense. And I know I know she feels blindsided. Oh, like, wait a minute. Where like, did that what? come from? I don't, I don't treat her like that. Hey. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. What? What? <laughs> We're over? <laughs> we get a divorce? Yeah. <laughs> Did you go file a paper? Wait, wait, I got to say, when we was boyfriend and girlfriend one time, we had an argument and he tried to say it was over. And I was like, no, it's not. You're not leaving me. <laughs> You're not leaving me. What are you talking about? Me. You're not leaving me. <laughs> I literally was like, babe, no. So I blink like, if you're okay. Blink yeah. twice if you're okay. I was like, babe, you're not leaving me. Like, it's just like, come on. You're not leaving me. It's and then he leaving. didn't leave me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that moment, Sean? I do. I think we were, it, it was it was a very dumb argument. I think yes. we were t- arguing over like sitting on the on the Set, on, yeah, sitting on the bed, bed or something. We had some dumb. We we went to. <laughs> I mean, we, really, really dumb. It was really it really was so, dumb. I'm embarrassed to even talk about it. it was it, but, we no, didn't make any real things with real people. Yeah. We all have to So I want you to remember that was about what. It was about I think sitting sitting on, on the bed. I told you that you couldn't sit on the bed for some <laughs> reason. I, for, we we were, hold on, but it, we we even went to therapy. It was, ba- it was basically. It was it was my bed and my and my and my co op. Yes, but that's what we were. That's not that because that's that, what we were friends. Oh, we were, we were, yeah. we were friends. <laughs> you got the wrong. You got the wrong argument. You got the wrong bed. Wrong, we no. We've bed. had the arguments be dumb. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why it's, it's not about the argument. It's just about something dumb. Like we went to therapy. I still don't remember what we were fighting for. And we went to the therapist literally you. to ask them. You know, you go to a therapist to be like, tell him he's wrong, please. <laughs> so literally, we went to the therapist, and the therapist was just like, well, why are you with her? By the time we left the therapist, I was like, oh, my God, I love him. <laughs> this is the best relationship. And I, I, started, don't even... I started listening. I was like, I love it for this, yes. this, this, and, and like, this, oh this, God. this, and this, and this, this, this. And we don't even know. And that was the one therapy session we went he's to. Probably, he's probably like, what are y'all doing here? We don't what even know. Here? We don't even know what we were arguing about. But no, wait, let me make a point. Y'all listening why you love us so much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. Because they have to get to the core. But you just want to bring the argument because you want the therapist to say. You wrong. Yes. that's what. But they don't They do not do that. But the one thing I was going to say, you asked us how. Like how we keep our joy in our marriage. I always say, and my parents were together for 45 years before my father passed away. 45 years. Shout yes. out to them. Oh, yes. And so my mother said this to me and it sticks with me. And it's that uh, people, uh, marriages don't get boring. People get boring. Mm-hmm. So you have to stay interested to stay interesting. So you have to keep growing, have interest about yourself. Like, what are you doing to grow? Mm. And that will make your partner interested. It'll make you interested in yourself. You know Mm. what I mean? If you stay interested, you'll stay interesting. So Sean is fun. We're constantly on adventures. We're We're constantly learning, growing. And so it's it's fun. Like, we're planning the next Jumping Juice 10,000. Sean... What has plans to save the world, and I believe when, in him. When is that? When is Jumping Juice uh, so 10,000? Ju- the jump next juice, one. Jumping Juice 10,000 is from April 8th through the 18th. But yes. this this time, Jeez. we're going for a million people. <laughs> this boy said a million people. I want I want a million people juicing at the same time. Yes. And these people I, be signing up how? Oh. They, they, they sign up. On, you can sign up on our website, DoubleDutchAerobics.com. Yeah. And you can sign right up to the Jumpin' Juice, click Jumpin' Juice 10,000 yep. and sign right up. How yep. many signed up in January? Uh, we had a we had a we had a couple of thousand sign yeah. up, but the thing with that was it was way more than that. So we had we had like one person that'll sign doing up, but they, but they're doing it with their whole job. Yeah, yep. 
You know what I'm saying? So there's no telling how many people. Yeah. So you got to articulate. Up. If y'all sign up, don't sign up as a family. Sign up yeah, individually yeah, yeah. so that they can actually so so, can so we can know. get yeah. to this million. But yes. yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, my me and my wife and my kids. And like, it's it, it was out of control. It was good. But I, I definitely, good. I, I, know, I know a million is a big number, but you know, thinking thinking big and thinking small. Yeah, because if you go for a million and you get 100,000. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thinking like, big and thinking small takes a same energy yeah. so I, I like go big yeah go, big. Yeah, go, go home big. go on <laughs> listen man i love talking to y'all um of course y'all can't tell me how the amazing race ends now we you can't, can't tell me what happens i even asked y'all did y'all get a chance to teach some of the other competitors how to double dutch y'all tight-lipped about that y'all get on my nerves um but um you know y'all just don't want to share no nothing i just <laughs> get can. no benefit from y'all sitting around <laughs> we signed here. a lot of papers i know y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of papers listen yes. I love it we're rooting for y'all um, yeah. you know you got my other people riding Leticia on the on, yes, on it as well right. that's mm -hmm. my people they were on the podcast a few seasons ago yes. uh, so shout out to them we love listen it. man thank y'all so much for stopping by the Dear Future Wifey podcast yes. how can people connect with y'all so um, everything is Double Dutch Aerobics to get the Bye Bye Fibroids ebook the Jumpin' Juice 10,000 to get certified to jump with us Everything is DoubleDutchAerobics.com. DoubleDutchAerobics.com. Subscribe. So and you'll listen, find us. Mm -hmm. Up next, not only am I going to be writing the Dear Future Wifey letter, but y'all about to get a... I'm going I'm to test Ooh. them and see if they can teast me how to double dutch in one minute or less. All Cast. right? All right. So that's what we about to do. So stay tuned. Up next, your boy's about to double dutch. All right. So here we go. All right. All right here we go. Middle. So start in the middle. Start Face the middle. me. Yeah. Oh. And just listen. So on the count of three, I'm going to jump with you. Ready? Okay. So on the count of three, you're just going to start hopping just like this. Oh, you have to count Ready? First. One, two, three, jump. That's it. Stay there. That's it. Don't switch. Don't, don't switch. Don't switch. Stay here. Here we go. Chris. Crawl. You, Chris. Yes, Tell me to Chris crawl? Yes. Yes. Chris. Hi. Cross. <laughs> I got that. Tell me to Chris crawl. Wait. Tell me to Chris crawl. That was off. So, so don't jump high. You're going to stay here. Where should you, you jump high? No, no. Ready? Don't switch. All right. That's it. One, two, one, two, switch. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. Back and forth. 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 Look what we're doing. Go, 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 go. go. Right, I need to work out. <laughs> I'm tired. You want to try? I got run in there. You want to try one more time? Okay, you just jump in. You just right. jump in. All right, sorry. I'm tired. So here's the thing. One more time. Okay. It's a one-two count. From one. Here. One, two, one, two, one. It don't Ready? switch. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Go. Here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Go faster. Go, 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 go. <laughs> That's when the rope is up. Oh, so that's going here. Yeah. 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 Up, yep. Yeah. Up, yeah. and then you replace yeah. it. Yep. Now when you know when to jump. Yep. There it is. Yeah. One, two. Go fast. Go fast. Go fast. Wait, one more time. Look. What's up? Even when you go faster, you don't ever switch your rhythm. So look. Oh. So look. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, like one, two, one. Oh. So you don't try. Ah. Oh. Got it? Slowly speed. Yeah. Right. Or you don't, you starting to double. You just want one, two, faster. One, two, faster. Yeah, we got to get Ready? You can't ready. You want to try to get one more time. So now, now you got it. When you go fast, stay on the one-two count. Yep, ready? One, two, one, two, three, go. Three, go. Ah. I'm going to yeah. do it with you. Ready? Go. One, one, two, three, go. 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 Right. go. How about I go? Right there. And one, yeah, one, two, one, two. Look at me. One, two together. One, two, 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 I'll try not to hit your thing. That was good. Stay tuned to the end for a letter to my future wifey. Been writing these love letters to you. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani. 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. 
the likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Now, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, in the dance of life, let us become the master choreographers, crafting our love into a graceful jump rope ballet, marriage. My love is a delicate balance, much like the artistry of a jump rope routine. Picture us, intertwined in the symphony of motion, each step a declaration of our commitment. Just as the ropes arc and weave, so too shall we navigate the intricacies of partnership, our movements fluid and synchronous. As we leap and twirl through the tapestry of time, let us find rhythm in the beating of our hearts, in the whispered promises exchanged with each bound. Our soul shall become the melody, harmonizing effortlessly as we sway to the cadence of our shared dreams. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, 
and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.